Uh, all right, I started the recording. Hi, this is the October 27th web content meeting. Um, so one, Kevin, for you was kind of what your time frame might be, mm -hmm. kind of what you're thinking at the moment. Uh, so the, the goal on this was to be uh, done before the Christmas holidays. Okay, that's fine. Is that still, do you think that's still a plan? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, there's uh, there's some things that need to kind of occur to, to wrap it up completely. For, for okay. example, the uh, all of the knowledge base pages need to have keywords. Okay. Uh, the the you mean the metrics or uh, all of them actually the the metrics and the uh, and the community handbook pages they need okay. to have keywords oh the, okay so, i didn't know the community handbook pages were going to have those too uh yeah it's uh, part of the search function okay right? yeah no so it makes the, sense. okay uh, so obviously the the handbook stuff is it's more informal okay so well we're, i think we're getting so okay that's that's good to know i was just curious if the time frame was still was still kind of on target and even if uh, and even if they don't ha all have keywords, uh -huh. uh, they they are still searchable. Okay. So the the keywords just uh, uh, provide a more fine grained search. Okay. Right. No, that sounds good. And I think just from a metric and metric model perspective, we're pretty getting pretty close. I've been trying to go through keywords for a mm -hmm. lot of the metrics. Um, I think the mod, you know, I think I think we're getting there. So I'll continue to work on that, um, and it should work with your timing. And so then, what when I'm done with that, I can just start issuing pull requests to include the context tags and the keywords. And it should be that simple, right? Just a pull request against the GitHub Markdown page. Is that all you need? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Okay. Yeah, and then and then on our end, it's just a matter of going and adding them. Okay. So. Just want to make sure I don't need to put it anywhere else. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do see your comment there, Sean. And I actually I did add that to the uh, the agenda prior, just to uh, okay to sort yeah. Out. So uh, I don't know if any. I, I'm not sure who iPhone user is, so I don't know if we need to do a community handbook update or a design group update. Uh, and Yash isn't here, so I suppose. Uh, don't really have a knowledge base update uh i can we can peek at the uh yash maybe iphone <clears throat> uh possibly yeah although I, I don't think he's ever come in iphone before yeah uh so the let me show you the uh so this is where we're at i'm gonna share my screen real quick on the, the knowledge base page. I'll make you a I'll make you a quote. Do you have shareable? I don't know. Well, okay, we'll see. you do now anyway. Okay, so the for the metrics knowledge base currently, this is where we're at. All right, so we can search the metrics and models. Uh, they're all sorted by topic area. Uh, we've got a header which provides a little bit of information about how the metrics are created uh, at the bottom of the page currently we're doing the release history mm -hmm. uh, so we do have the in the general design we've decided that there would be kind of these these three modules other than the knowledge base right so the first one is up here mm. uh, and then release history and then the we have this one right here called currently it's called chaos software. Uh, and I don't know what we're going to do with that I'd I'd thought about. Uh, using this as a place to link out to the software products, but basically some tests that says you know chaos metrics can be uh, implemented using these software projects. Uh, and I, I could add the initiatives to it as well, like the, the badging, which would be like chaos, chaos uh, initiatives and software implement chaos metrics, follow these links to if you're interested in DEI event badging or 
using Augur or Grimoire Lab. Uh, so I was thinking, I was thinking that for this module right here. Uh, however, we do something else with it as well. I guess the the question for this group would be, if you were to land on the uh, the metrics knowledge base page, what would you expect to find here? The Just, go ahead. No, oh, I, um, I I think the most coherent web experience would be um, each each of the pieces of software would just have a page that briefly describes it and then links out to its own preferred documentation. So Daniel or Georg could provide links for Paturgia and I could provide links in, in the narrative, the text for Bogger. Um, we, may, we may have the Compass stuff available by the time we launch as well. And that, that may be, you know, we'll see how, whether that goes under Baturgia or that goes under um, Asia Pacific, you know, Giddy, it may go under Giddy probably. Um, mm -hmm. So, but yeah. Okay, so I was planning on doing that one page for uh, each of those things. Oh, this might be now going to be even the next 30 minutes. Uh, so you get it. I was last. McDuff, I didn't quite understand what you said. I'm sorry. It might be the connection. So, so I, I I'll McDuff, if you have something to say, that's totally cool, but I'll I'll add. Um on this page, Kevin, the one that you have up right now, I believe that all that it should be is those, if you can scroll up a little bit, is these the topic, like the search for metrics and metrics models the topic areas and the release history that's it so just get rid of this all together yes okay. and that the navigation across the top could include just software you know what i mean so like when you go to the metrics page or this metrics slash metrics models page all you see are those things that are related to metrics and metrics models full stop i agree okay. yeah that's uh that's a better information architecture i think okay yeah that's that's fine uh Okay. That was just going to be a, a place where uh, where we could another place where we could link out to it, but we yeah. don't need to do that. So, so then a question for you, Kevin. Okay. You know, like across the top where it says like about community events, metrics, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, is it would it get too clunky to be like metrics and metrics models? I don't know quite what your like limitations are up there. Up here, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, instead of just metrics, so the, I would say metrics and metrics. So this right now we do have a we we do have one that has three words in it. Yeah, right. Uh, that's not great. So one one word is better. There's okay. there's kind of this there's this thing when we because the uh, the pages or because the page sizes are all kind of dynamic and we're built yep. for mobile. When we start when we start changing the size of these pages. Yep things start happening like that yeah it makes right? sense I, I kind of figured as much i just thought i would ask and so maybe we can just keep that metrics yeah. at the top you know with an implication that metrics models are also available there what I, I was I, yeah what i was thinking was in the drop down we keep it as metrics and then in the drop down we would have metrics models uh something like that but wouldn't those all go to the same page just this page that we're looking at. Oh, I'm sorry, not metrics models. Uh, I was contemplating actually putting the uh, uh, software software in here is in the in this drop down. Mm -hmm. So software okay. and initiatives in the drop down under metrics. I would just let's get rid of the drop down on metrics and just have it be a metrics link. It just comes okay. just to this page. And then my guess is is that I know you're just talking about this page, but my guess is the one that currently says DEI event badging. As we start getting project badging that could just say badging and then it could have a drop down which is event and uh and and even then i'm not sure i'm not exactly sure how much i need to maintain there because the badging folks apparently are building their own website i think yeah i think they've been working yeah, so. kind of on a site that kind of helps people through that process 
so that that was that that actually is a question I have here is how much I need to uh, how much I need to include batching since they're doing their own thing. Um, Include a link in the nav. Just a link in the nav. So not even a, not even a, like yeah. software wants a page for each software. Uh, badging just wants a link to another place. I, I would assume so just based on the conversations I've seen um, okay. because they, got, they'll have their own home page. It'll list like who's gotten a badge, have the application, all of that stuff is going to be over there. Okay. That's, that's fine. That's, that's easier. That's easy to maintain on this side. And it's the, that's kind of the default way that we've been yes. doing other things as well. Right. So the, like the, we don't embed YouTube on the page. We just link out to this external spot, right? We don't, we don't embed chaos cast in the website. We just link out to chaos cast. Yep. Uh, so the goal of the website is really just a place to kind of people send people to where they need to go. Yep. So the Elizabeth, do you know if unbadging will there be like an event badging page and a project badging page? Um, I think that's TBD. I okay. know for sure there will be an event side of things. I'm not sure about the other part of it, but oh, okay. yeah. Okay, well, yeah. okay, nonetheless. But I think to, your, to the earlier point, Kevin, I think that ultimately can just say badging. Okay. And we don't need any explanation of badging. It's just a, a link out. Yes. So so then I would, add, I would ask Sean again, are you sure you want a page or would you prefer to just have a link out to your website? It's a good question. So w one of the things I hear from among newcomers frequently is, you know, you've got Augur, you've got Grimoire Lab. What, what is the difference? Where should I start? And I think brief, you know, brief um, piece of text about Grimoire Lab and a brief piece of test about, text about Augur and possibly compass if it's prepared at that point it would just help people make that decision without having to jump out of the site like i'm talking like a three sentences or four sentences in a paragraph that just um we could put that in the getting started on the yeah. getting started page mm -hmm. uh and then obviously we have the uh i think that information would be in the uh in some form on the uh, the community page, right? Because if we go to the participate page now, like Augur and Grimoire Lab are, are accounted for on the uh, on the participate page. So I think on the community page where we talk about the the different working groups, mm -hmm. uh, we would be inclusive of of. Augur and Grimoire Lab there as well, and probably badging has to be added uh, as well. Uh, but this this page will go away and actually become part of uh, the new community page. I'm I'm, in, I'm interested in other people's perspectives because obviously I, I come from a certain perspective, but I think more people are when they come to Chaos initially they they want to see working metrics. And and so giving them an opportunity to like have a quick link to Grimoire Labs example implementation, Augur's example implementation, and then another link with a brief explanation um, and a top level nav. I I think that just helps it helps people not have to poke through the website to find it. Yeah. And that's going back to going back to why I had initially thought that it would be a good idea to have that software section on the metrics page, right? So we've just presented all these metrics and do you want to see, and now we, we do have software that can implement these metrics. So that was my initial thinking on having that that software area there, where it was just and, kind of a, a brief description of Augur and Grimoire Lab, and you can use this software to implement these chaos metrics, and here's a link out to the software. And I suppose I suppose I'm saying if we have there may not be real estate in the top nav, you may have a very wide screen, but if there's real estate in the top nav, I have I'm a saying, very wide screen. Yeah, what I'm what I am saying is that I think people want to know uh, they want to be able to quickly find the implementations. Mm -hmm. And if we ask them to click through more things, they're less likely to find what they're looking for. 
but again, I, I have a perspective on this that, that may not be the right general perspective. Uh, so I, I was planning on putting software in the main nav. Uh, All right. the, the, the real question is what other presence we want on it, right? So if software is in the main nav, on that software, do we link, do we just link directly to the website in that main nav? Uh, and then we can add some Grimoire Lab and some Augur content on, say, maybe the Getting Started page. And then we also have a little bit on the community page. And both uh, we'd link to uh, the software in those places as well. However, those places might have a little bit more description. I might. Um... I might have a page for software exactly like this with, you know, a pair, you know, like a paragraph doesn't, I don't even think it needs to be three paragraphs. And then uh, two of these little boxes, um, maybe three for each system with a, a very short type of description and then a link to uh, uh, install uh, uh, software and a link to uh, exam, you know, example. No so this is this is what we have now on the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I don't know. That's that that's that's uh, that's not bad. It's I think probably some of it's it's a lot of information, and it's probably not exactly the information. It's not the sort of succinct information people are looking for. It still forces them to process I like, a lot. I like Sean's idea. So if you have a, if you click on the metrics page, there would be a software that you just like, no, no, sorry. Yeah. So metrics, the metrics link would have no drop downs. It would just take you to the metrics page. Which like is that, page. just like that, and then across the top, you would have software with no drop downs, which right. would just take you to the software page, which looks scroll up a little bit that looks a lot like this. Mm -hmm. And instead of metrics and metric, no, nope, scroll up instead of metrics and metrics models, it would just say software. Mm -hmm. And to Sean's point, it would give a narrative about the different types of software and how you might want to mm -hmm. think about them. And then I like Sean's idea of the boxes instead of organization, platform, and software. It would mm -hmm. say Grimoire Lab, Augur, and Compass or Craigit or whatever. You know what I mean? And it would just be a those would just be brief descriptions. Mm -hmm. And at that, and then they could include those brief descriptions could have links include this. Um. Yeah. May, I mean, maybe is this too brief? No, I think this is actually, uh, you know, we, Daniel may want to alter the narrative for Grimoire Lab. I probably would say something different about Augur just to explain it extremely briefly. And then instead of info about, I would say, um, get, get started and um, live example. There, that's two perfect. links. Yep. And then the get started page would go out to a, a unique Augur site mm -hmm. and the, the live example would go out to a live example of Augur and the Grimoire Lab would have a get started link mm -hmm. and it could go out to wherever they want to link out to for getting started if that's on GitHub or if that's their own page. Mm -hmm. And they would have a live implementation which could take you out to Cauldron, for example. So it, it doesn't sound like we're dealing with a, a, a full page's worth of information. Correct. Uh, so the So for me, the question would come back to if it's not a full page's worth of information, should we try to put it on a page or should we try to incorporate it in other places? So I think, so if you click on the metrics page. Uh, just back to where right we were. There. Yep, where we were. Yeah. Yep, so across the top, if you just have software as one of the options, so about community events, metrics, software. Well, you're talking in the main navigation. Yeah, in the main yeah, navigation. Okay. You would so just main... click on, yep. Okay. You would just click on software. Uh -huh. And it would take you to a page that looks just like this, except obviously instead of metrics, it just says software. software. So 
or chaos implementation, oh, just, like chaos software implementations or something like that. Go back. Just stop moving around for a second. Go back. But, to yeah. the, so, I mean, this is the software page, right? I so understand. But what yeah. I'm saying is that we, I think we can simplify it to yeah. Sean's point that would be instead of metrics and metrics models, it would just be a paragraph that talks a little bit about the software that we have in chaos. That's it. That's all that's in the top thing. And then below that would be three boxes, that, like those boxes you have here, because then it'll look consistent like the metrics page, which is cool. Mm -hmm. And one of the boxes will say Augur, mm -hmm. one of the boxes will say Grimoire Lab, and mm -hmm. one of the boxes will say whatever. Com Compass, Compass possibly, yeah. yeah. Possibly. And for the time being, we just have two boxes. And then there would be a little text in the box that would just say mm -hmm. Augur is this. And then in the platform box, which would be the Grimoire Lab box, it would say Grimoire Lab is this. Mm -hmm. And then there would be two links in each of the boxes, so four links total. One link would say, you know, get started for Augur. And one link would say live live demo or live implementation. Mm -hmm. And both of those links would go outside of this website. They okay. would go somewhere else. Yeah. And then Grimoire Lab would have two links. And one of those links would say get started. And one of those links would say live implementation. And again, both of those links would go out of okay. this website. And that's it. That's all the software page is, period. Okay. And Sean can, if Sean on his get started page wants to include like detailed text, like we currently have, mm -hmm. like if he wants to, then that's his choice. <laughs> like he can, he can manage that page. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Cause I think, I think all the detailed text we have on the current page doesn't, people just want, I want to see it or I want to try to install it. And then they don't really want to read all the rest of that. Okay. And, and it makes and I will it. Say, I, oh, go ahead, Sean. You go ahead, Elizabeth. I was just going to say, I will say when we were doing the outreachy auger documentation project and we were doing kind of an audit, there was that that page had instructions, the GitHub page had instructions, the auger site had instructions, and the community handbook had instructions to get started, and none of them matched up. So the, the more tight we can keep this and like the single source of truth is the better. So, yes, A plus to all of this. Um, the same thing with uh, Grimoire Lab. I mean, they didn't have that problem. I don't know, but that is linking out to their site. My only question about that, though, is if someone comes to chaos and they are trying to search for something auger related, how, how do we incorporate the auger docs or do we or like what how do we solve that issue? Because I know that that's also been something that was confusing for newcomers. They came to chaos. They were trying to search for um, auger stuff and it didn't. Like there was no way for them to know that it oh it was all over here in the auger documentation so i'm not sure how to solve that i i well my i think if if that search result uh brings us to this software page then they can see auger and they can see um gets you know get started or or live example and what's on the get started page can include all that information so any search for auger would just take them um, well, we here. will have we will have links out hmm. from our getting started page as well. So yeah. we can't we can't just uh, I know we're talking about we're sure. talking about having a software page. That's fine. This isn't the only place where we will link out that, to Augur. So we'll fine. link out from the get started page, and then we'll also link out from the community page. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's totally we will, fine. We will we will not be linking out from the metrics page. Though. Okay. So the community so. knowledge base will have a little bit of Augur information in that also i believe just Very, like the, the, maybe that same kind of narrative or something probably the so same box works. they'll probably okay. be replication we'll use that exact same box uh on the community page so because okay. the the community page the community knowledge base page for the most part is replacing the participate page all right so the the calendar will be there and that's also where we have all of the, kind of the working group information Uh, okay, thank you. That's helpful. You've given me very clear guidance on, on what you'd like. Uh, so I'm going to jump back to the... Uh, Sorry, Kevin, one quick other question on that metrics and models page. At the top uh -huh. there where we had the narrative um, about the metrics, I, I don't think we actually explicitly say what a model is. 
So if I was going to add like a little sentence to that, where uh, is that in the web? That's I assume obviously in the it's website. on the website. Yeah, uh, and okay. at some point, I'll just add maybe like a sentence in. I would hold off. Oh, okay. Uh, so we don't actually we don't have any models live currently uh, on the website. The models haven't come in yet. Uh, I don't know what the release policy is on models. I don't know how they're doing that. Uh, so. I'd, uh, so models models haven't been incorporated into the uh, into the knowledge base at all currently. So, okay, I just thought it would I, be helpful to like explain what a model is versus a metric because we don't yeah. actually do that and, explicitly. So for someone and, new, they would be like, "What's a model?" Yeah, I, I think at, at some point the models will come in, uh, but I'm not sure when that'll happen. Uh, I agree with you that yeah, we do need some explanation. Uh, but currently there is no, there isn't any model information in there currently. So, so maybe the, I think the, uh, the, the headline isn't quite accurate, right? This is just metrics right now. Well, so kind of under the assumption that models are coming in, I think Elizabeth is just trying to add a sentence that would explain them. Yeah, I, I, and I, and I, and I do agree. I was just, I was just saying I, I might hold off. Or maybe not. I maybe, I, I, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's probably no reason to hold off. Sorry, I'm, I'm probably just being silly. You're good. No, it's, it's totally fine. Okay. Yash, are you here? No, no, yes. Oh, I'm just looking at the wrong, uh, uh, looking at the wrong uh, meeting. So he was here last time. Uh, okay, uh, so that's basically where we're at on the knowledge base. And the knowledge base is kind of what's holding us back from kind of finishing up the full website design. So as soon as the, as soon as the knowledge base is completely live, then we can go and we can change everything else uh on the website uh including the main navigation uh so right now i'm in the i'm in the process of creating those content areas uh and elizabeth if you if you wanted to if you wanted to edit that that one content area i just created that yesterday and this is the link if you wanted to add the oh thanks uh a bit about models. Word up, I will do that. Thank you. Uh, so, well, since no one else is here, we can just we can jump down to the uh, uh, URL redirect policy. Uh, so, Sean, I think this is you. Just iron that out real quick. Yeah. Um, I'm looking in the, I'm trying to figure out how we publish the metrics. Is it this, um, is it this documents from Git at plugin? Is that how we pull stuff from GitHub? No. Okay. What do we do to pull stuff from GitHub? Because I think it, it's it whenever the name of a metric changes and they do mm -hmm. um or in some cases um if a metric moves a focus group or something then the it gets published to a different place i i i really i would i desire a uh a perma permanent link so that um the software that we build and the documentation that we build around that software can create you know use those links um to point to the related chaos metrics and mm -hmm. not have to figure out which of the 75 links breaks during every release um and so i was trying to look through how we publish the code from github to see if there was a parameter for creating a, a permalink for a document um, okay but so I, I, let me which, let me let me walk you through the process real quick 
so the, the code is So we actually have so we have a bit of code that was actually written by the Linux Foundation that does this. Oh, okay. Uh, so I remember. The, okay. Yeah. yeah. So the the application that you identified. Can you make this a little bigger, Kevin? Yeah. Sorry. That is. Yeah. I don't know why that's so. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, that's good. I'll make my screen a little smaller too. Uh, so the the plugin that you had found does something similar uh just not what we're using it's not what we're using and it it doesn't uh, it doesn't work quite as well uh, yeah okay. so uh i added i added it uh to the website when we were trying uh, to yeah to yeah to to test to see if it would work out because we when we initially moved from hosting mm -hmm. uh, from linux foundation hosting it to here yeah, uh, i don't you. know if you remember but we had oh uh, yeah we had some trouble getting that piece of code to work initially. Yep. Uh, so, so the code is written. It's uh, we can get in and modify it in the. Uh, oh, what is the? Uh, uh, so themes, no, not no settings. Sorry for forget real quick. Uh, Oh, settings, no. Ah, theme file editor, sorry. So it's actually, so over here, it's the, uh, uh, okay. And I, I can tell you exactly which one it is, uh, but which, we probably don't need you don't need that now but here yeah github php client uh, there's actually a couple files that are associated with it uh, so if you if you wanted those i can give those to you however real quick let me just show you the uh, so when we create a metric page so when a, when a metric gets released we create a page on the website for it mm -hmm. right uh, and it's the, it's the same process for the uh, uh, knowledge base it happens the exact same way. Uh, the difference is that uh, these pages are stored kind of in a very haphazard way here, whereas the knowledge base has kind of a, a better file structure system. So, so right now when we create a, a metric, let's just we'll look at metric attendee demographics, for example, uh, we create the page. We name it metric attendee demographics, and we create the permalink here. Uh, and then we uh, can connect it to GitHub using that piece of code, which actually the piece of code is designed to, uh, it creates a module in w, the WP Bakery page builder, right? So we can go so, down here and I can I can add a GitHub module this, or- So is it the- is it the does the flow that for each metric we have to hand you know hand edit the page for this? So we we don't have to hand edit the page. We just have to connect it, right? So we we create the page with the title mm -hmm. and the link, and we add the GitHub module. And then when we add the GitHub module, we just have to add the the connection to what what we're connecting it to, right? So okay, in this so case, we're connecting it to the uh, diversity and inclusion repository in the chaos organization, and here's the link to the file. So when we do this right now, is it our practice that we change the primary URL also? Like when the name of the document changes, when the name of the metric changes, if we didn't change the permalink, the permalink would remain the same even though the document changed? Uh, so the the permalink gets uh, gets populated based on the name of the page, uh, and then you can go in and you can uh, adjust it. So we decided on the the naming convention for these that it would be basically the chaos website, and then metric 
attendee demographics with an attendee demographics is the name of the the uh, metric obviously uh, if we were to use the same naming convention for models it would be model and then the name if you change that name does it change the permalink automatically yes or you know, up here this yeah. this name no mm -hmm. no once this permalink is set it's set okay so what i what i would suggest is either when the metric name changes just don't change the permalink mm -hmm. or if if you know having a permalink that's different than the metric page name is potentially confusing and it might be that instead of the permalink being the name of the metric that the permalink be um i don't know some some kind of like metric slash an id or something you know such as some kind of meaningless piece of code you know meaning a meaningless meaningless identifier of some kind that doesn't change ever and then we can link to it regardless of whether or not the metrics name changes we're always linking we've always got this permalink that doesn't have any meaning that confuses people or we just never change the permalink so in the in that uh, the text the two options that the one option i mentioned was having url redirects which we do have the ability to do uh, and then the, the other option that you mentioned was uh, having just a number-based permalink, or uh, which is which is manageable as well. So the uh, so the number-based that number-based permalink that would never change mm -hmm. would be easier to manage. Okay. Uh, the uh, the permalink that has a very intuitive name in it would be easier to share. Uh, Right. So with the with the uh, if we always know what the name is, uh, right? If we if if we always know that the the name of the metric is in the URL, it's pretty easy to add to documents because we we link to we link to them in the metrics. Uh, so we could we could link to them in the metrics pretty easily. Uh, if we're having to look at the number. Uh, it does it does make it harder for us to link to those metrics in places? However, you, I think you're right that the the stability of that link is much better, right? It never never breaks. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, I'm okay doing either one. The, uh, the the only advantage of the number is that like when we change the name of a metric, there isn't uh, inconsistency, and I don't know how much of a how much. We don't change metrics names that often, and I, th I think this is better than it was because we aren't, you know, like when groups reorganize their focus groups, we were having that change things as well. Um, we did have, we had that one release where we changed all of the pull request metric names, mm -hmm. and that would, so in that one release that probably broke a lot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. for the, for the most part, the hope would be that metrics names don't change that often right right uh so url redirects would add the same that same stability mm -hmm. uh it's just it's just another step right so if a name change happens then we just have to come to the website and we have to add the url redirect again and i suppose i'll ask if uh others agree that this is important because maybe it's just a sean thing So well, I think I, it's important. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, so, um, so I actually I think this is tied a little bit to the next item on the agenda, which is about the release process. You know, kind of in kind of this revision process. Um, and so I understand listening to you, Sean, and to you, Kevin, um, that one is not maybe more perfect than the other, both have potential positives and negatives associated with them. I, I totally understand that. I think my in inclination is uh, towards the number for just partly in effort to help ease the process 
later where when this right. may, may not occur mm -hmm. um that's my inclination and that's my main reason for doing it again i understand there are positives and negatives for both but my inclination is for a number and then at, a link and then at, at the time that the new website launches kevin we could do redirects for all of the existing urls to those numbers and then then we would only have to do the redirects that one time okay oh, that's fine that's fine with me i'm not a uh I'm not attached to any idea. So, okay. and, uh, and I agree completely that the redirects were, I mean, the, the whole, or the getting this sorted is really important. So the, the, when we, it, having the ability to do redirects because of this link security was something that this is one of the reasons that we took over hosting this mm -hmm. website ourselves, because we didn't have the ability to do the redirects prior. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. So. So that's, I mean, we could bring this maybe to the community call on Tuesday, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And just say, this is kind of what we talked about in the, if this is where we want to go is with the numbers and here are kind of the reasons why, just to bring it yeah. up, that's all. Yeah, and, and um, you know, the, the main reason why is so that when people, like when well, when Liturgia and, and Augur reference chaos metrics that they're implementing, in their documentation, those are stable. And frankly, when other people decide to put chaos metrics in reports or things, that those links are stable for them as well. Yeah, honestly, my my hmm. biggest thing is that right now the release process and the revision process is too complicated. Mm -hmm. And this uh, would simplify it. It would at least not add more complication down the road. And, you know, I, I, part of me is like, you know, Kevin, like you may not be the web admin forever. You can be, but you may not. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, a, it's possible. Kevin may graduate. Yeah, it's, it's there for you. But like, I, you know, part of like how we kind of bring other people on board to help with the content, the web management content. And like the easier we can make it, I think the the better it will be for kind of handing off things. Again, Kevin, you are more than welcome to say I'm not getting ready yet, but I'm just thinking about like support into the future. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, there there are moments when I uh, when I do not want to do it anymore. Well, let's let, we'll we say, can let's we'll say we'll we leave it at that. We start talking about that. If <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, so. And here's McDuff with five years of experience in WordPress. So perfect timing. <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. Hi. Sorry, I had to drop off soon. But um, so McDuff recently joined um Chaos Africa. And you know, I got I interacted with McDuff early this morning. And you know, we are talking about his experience and what he's interested in. So he kind of like talked about um said he had experience in WordPress, and I was very excited. <laughs> And then I asked about like his experience level with WordPress and if he's interested in contributing to the website. And he indicated interest. And I, I have connected uh, Markdoff with Belema. Um, you know, she's going to have a call with him tomorrow to work him through, you know, stuff that um Kevin and Belema have been doing on the website. So I just wanted to introduce Markdoff before I drop off. It's nice to meet you, McDuff. It's nice to meet you, McDuff. Um, thank you very much, um, everyone. My name is um McDuff Ulusa from Nigeria. I'm a WordPress developer. And aside from that, I do um Python Django as well. So um I I recently joined the uh, course, although I don't really know much about it. So I wish to like get to know it um contribute my little. Excellent. Mm -hmm. We'd love to have your contributions. I know that. Then about the community handbook updates, um, Joy and I kind of like took a little break when we're back. Um, uh, we had a meeting this morning um, earlier some hours ago, so we're continuing uh, working on the 
handbook. So we'd have like more, we'd have it, like we're updating and kind of like reviewing stuff. So we'd have more updates in the next meeting. Cool. So, if you're if you're interested in in working on the website, maybe maybe we can set up a meeting, uh, just you and I, and I can walk you through the process and coordinate the. Uh, and if you if you want to do some work on it, I can we can we can coordinate it that way. Uh, so currently, the only person doing any work on the website is myself. Uh, so and and Yach is doing the. Uh, uh some of the knowledge base work although i think he might be he might be wrapping up if you want to share your email in the chat i'll i'll reach out to you so the <laughs> That's spelled right, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I want to put the in front of it. That's why it's yelling at oh, you. Gotcha. Um, so then I would just, there's the stuff email, Kevin, if you see that in the chat. Oh, thank you. Yep. I got it. And then um, just as I, I would like to coordinate with you, Elizabeth, on the metrics release. And I think this includes translation. <laughs> I think it includes. Um, Go ahead. Um, I think right now the metrics release and like metrics um, uh, revisions is is just it's too complicated. I know this is this isn't a website thing, I, but like the website's kind of involved because it picks up this process. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so um, right now, like I look at the issue for creating a new metric or the issue, the, you know what I'm talking about, the template or the issue template for like re, 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 um, revising a metric. Like, I just think it's too much. And my guess is that like, if I asked like Kevin and me and Sean and Elizabeth to describe the release process, we would get four different descriptions <laughs> as to, to what needs to be done. Sure. Um, it's always a bit of a mystery to me. Like, I feel like I don't understand all the parts. Yeah. And so um, I, I would like to propose maybe a simplified model. I don't know what that would look like. Yeah, exactly. I always defer to Kevin or Georg whenever they're, they're on the call. That's basically my model, um, which is not a good model. Like, we shouldn't require Kevin or Georg to be present to, to do a metrics release. It's suboptimal. Uh, it's it's <laughs> not that they don't again, not that they don't know what they're doing, but like having a person have to be present to do that. So I would like for Elizabeth and myself to get together and kind of talk through um through a new simplified model for releasing a metric. Um still attending to the thing, hopefully attending to a lot of the things that we have and Kevin not like creating a system that would be different for the website. You know what I mean? So may, ensuring that that doesn't like have a negative impact downstream for you to pick these things up on the website. So anyway, that's just my proposal. And I know that Kevin, you and Banat and I had also talked about this as well. Mm -hmm. you know, so I, I agree, Sim uh, a simplified simplified release would be better. I think you and I have, we've talked a little bit about that in the mm -hmm. past as well. Uh, yeah, Just kind of simplifying, maybe getting rid of the, the PDF release part. Yep. Uh, I like, I wonder like if the website is doing solid translations, you know what I mean? Like we could get, and the, yeah, and that, that's why this is, that's why this is all here. Yeah. The, uh, the way we, I mean, the, the, the release itself was really about, well, that's it's twofold. One is the providing some rigor and validity for the, how, sure. how we're defining metrics. Yep. Uh, but then it was also, it's also about how we present those metrics to, uh, to the the users or the people, right? Mm -hmm. So with the with the knowledge base, we're completely changing the way that we're presenting the metrics. Yep. Uh, so the it's it can affect the release, or or it may not affect the release. And I would mm -hmm. uh, I would mm -hmm. kind of like it to affect the release. 
I mean, we don't do the PDF anymore. And we don't have to do translations uh, anymore. And we don't have to do translations anymore. Yeah. Right. I mean, so that, those two, those two little things, like they, they're it's like, a lot of work. Yeah. And they like take you like on, from the translations perspective, it takes you out of the workflow of just trying to get a metric release. Like we did the work, we have it on GitHub, just yeah. notify Kevin that it's there. This metrics, there. when we do those metrics release, that's about two days of work for me. Yeah. So, so. I, I, so I'd like to make that not two days of work for right. anybody <laughs> you know what i mean so um, anyway that's that's what i'd like to propose and so maybe i know kevin you and Vinod and i had kind of talked about doing this as well but maybe i could just do it with elizabeth i mean you're more than welcome to be part of that but and we yeah, can bring it to you and you could be like that's not going to work because xyz you know what i mean you could kind of guide however, it. yeah however you want to do it if you okay. if you want me to be a part of the conversation I can I can be a part of the conversation. Okay. Uh, or or you can just come and talk to me about it later. Um, yeah. So maybe we could just kind of bring a simplified model, and then you could guide us from there. You know uh, I mean? Do you? Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Or or uh, I can include you. Too. I'm just uh, I was just wondering if you, if you're trying to make a simplified model and you're not exactly sure what the current model is. <laughs> <laughs> it's ask Kevin. Uh, That's the current <laughs> model. <laughs> Would you like me to be there for that? Doesn't give us yeah. that. Hey, yeah, that's our that. new simplified model. We're right. just going to put your phone number. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if you're if you're trying to simplify our yeah, existing sure. model, would it be helpful for me to be there since yeah, probably, I probably am familiar so. with the existing model? Yeah, probably. So, I mean. So I mean, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. I, I don't. No, no. Uh, I will not feel left out if you want to have that conversation without me. But um, so let, I'll connect all of us, and we can kind of go from there. But anyway, that's just my. We really need to do this. So anyway, thank yeah. you for listening to me on that. I know I took us over time. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm going to plan on moving forward with the uh, yeah. the numbers then in the URL. Uh, and uh, I'm going to kind of think of that number as a primary key with the thought that in the future maybe these metrics might end up in a database uh, so if you have any thoughts Idea. on uh, uh, best practices for generating a primary key let me know and John, that would be you we can move yeah. forward with that process yeah I mean I'm I think any kind of numeric strategy is fine. I have no no religion whatsoever about it. All right, I'm gonna hop off meeting. Yeah, in five. Uh, yeah I got a meeting in five also. So see, see you later. later. Okay. Me too. Thank you, Kevin. Bye. Bye. <laughs> see you later. Bye.